Well, recently on our programme, we, we spoke with Shane Fitzgerald from Port Law, who's an open source farmer with Glamby and Chagas for 2019. So early in the week, I got a chance to talk to Warford's second open source farm for 2019, all involved in the whole area of sustainability, and that's Stephen Fitzgerald of Greg and Ag. First of all, Stephen, how did you get involved in the open source programme? Hi Kieran, um, middle of last year, middle of 2019, Owen Power, our local Chagas advisor, and Richie O'Brien, the open source representative for Chagas, approached us and said, would we be interested and involved? And at the time, we, we thought about it and we thought it would be a great idea right. to benefit the firm going forward as there's a lot of emphasis being put on sustainability at the moment. Stephen, you're a young man. At what stage did you decide farming was, was going to be for you? I'd say back as far as when I was in primary school. Like, I, I couldn't wait to come home from school to go to farm and you know when I was doing the leaving cert it wasn't popular there was a lot of trades at the time and I still went pursued farming went to college in Kildalton went to New Zealand for a while and got a job in Chagas in Moorpark for a few years and returned home farming Was the New, exper- the New Zealand experience worthwhile did it really benefit you did it open your eyes to all different areas of it, farming It did. It definitely did because at the time there was a lot of talk of expansion in Ireland and expansion over there happened 15-20 years right. ago and it was going well and it was brilliant just to leave home and see meet new people and see different ways of doing things so coming back then you get the job in Moorpark again that, that was a huge opportunity for you and what area did you actually get involved in which job uh, in this job came up as a farm manager uh, on one of the outside farm on the Dairy Gold Research Farm I was there for five years and then I moved across to the Curtins Farm for three or four years um, and at the same time the farm at home was growing uh, we were working together, myself, mum and dad were working together in a partnership. And as the farm was growing, there's more demand to be at home. So being a part-time farm, you became a full-time it, farm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It happened right. It happened naturally. And I realised I couldn't be going up and down to Fermoy every day. I, I started a young family, got married and things like that. And I just, time was running out right. as such. So I decided to move home full-time. So you're up over 100 cows now in, in Greg and Aglish. As regards the, the setup, so you actually have a partnership with your dad and, uh, and mum. Yeah, the three of us are working together. Um, Mem, Noreen and Dad Rich were all firm together the last good, good number of years mm-hmm. and we seem to be getting on very well together. Busy at the moment, obviously cows can starting to calve. Yeah, yeah, brilliant time of year to be involved in it. Uh, just hitting the ground at the moment, we're in the thick of it. You enjoy it? Yeah, you, you look forward to it. You, you dread it from Christmas to the middle of January, but then from middle of January on, you, you get eager. You work on adrenaline. Exactly, you're waiting yeah. for the first one. When the first one comes in, you're, uh, you're off and away. Now, the open source to, to the non-initiated, it's a scheme between Glambia and Chagas, the open source farm, sustainability farming. What's involved in it for you as a participant? Um, main, mainly... T- the door to sustainability is popular at the moment and there's a few things we wanted to get out of the programme was we wanted to be the firm to be financially sustainable, environmentally sustainable and um and lifestyle is very important too. Like there's no point working every hour of the day for right. for no benefit for, like we, we right. need to have it all together well benefit. So working closely with Glamby and particularly with you, Brian, your Chagas advisor who actually is the advisor on the ground. As regards f- from a financial point of view, the um, was that a big help for you, put, putting down the actual facts and figures yeah. on a monthly uh, basis? It, it is, because there's no point working away and not knowing what you have at the end of the day. You could w- work very hard for right. less, but we have to be smart about what we're doing. We, we, want, we want the firm to be profitable and attractive for people coming after us too. Obviously, the environmental one is a huge one. I know farmers have very much embraced it, going back to REPS, the Rural Environment Protection Scheme and, and TAMS, but it's gone up another notch. I know you've been very pre-active, or proactive in that whole area. Yeah, um, with, with the last six or seven years we've been doing our small bit, we've been planting white horn hedgerows before any of this was popular or things like okay. that. We've been doing our, our small bit just to benefit our own farm, shelter for cows and things like that and just make the farm nicer and more presentable. But And this year now we've planted a few extra trees and it is popular mm-hmm. and it is going to benefit our farm in the long run. Soil testing obviously is a, is a real um, benchmark for you yeah. as well. Um, we were in the REPS program uh, 10 or 12 years ago and from then on, since then, we've been soil sampling the farm every two and three years and we've done it now again this year and we have a nutrient plan in place for the year going ahead. It's so important really because guys were putting out far, uh, fertiliser willy-nilly, doing what they did last year, so it, it's really been um, a breakthrough for, for grassland farmers. Yeah, it's huge because... We're measuring grass now weekly and we're able to keep track of what every paddock does and we can tend to the paddocks with whatever we want. We can be more, we can be wiser with our slurry and more efficient with our nitrogen and our uh, fertilizers. You mentioned the slurry there. Obviously, there's been advancement there as well as regards from from an environmental point of view. Yeah. Uh, Traditionally, we always use splash plate 
and most farmers did. But you know, those uh, people driving along the road would see this um, the, massive, and indeed would would smell it as well. Exactly, you see the fields black, and you yeah. smell the slurry. But now, in the last couple of years, um, trail and shoes and dribble bars have become very popular, and we have embraced that now. With the last two, so you're on the trail and shoe. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, and we find it worked very well, especially in the springtime and things like that. You might explain to our listeners how it actually works, how um, how how it benefits um, the the soil and the environment. In, instead of the tanker uh, driving into the field and, and spraying the fertile, spraying the slurry over the grass, but from a meter high and landing on the grass, yeah. uh, the machine comes in direct contact with the soil and drags. Not r- rubs along the soil and just leaves the slurry directly in contact just with the feeds soil. it into Ex- it. Exactly, right where the plant needs it. And it min- minimises uh, smell and odours going off into the end. And the no, no, Nitrogen loss to the environment, yeah. Um, the other one, buzzword, of course, is protected jury. And just before we come here, you mentioned that you've been going down that that one, that that whole area as well yeah. as regards from, from an environmental point of view as well. Yeah, um, we were nervous enough about going down the protected jury route, but we started uh, late last year. Um, with our nutrient plan now, we can we were confident that protect urea would work for us. And what time of the year then would you start using that product? Uh, we started with the first round oh. out uh, with slurry out. Uh, the whole farm is after getting uh, protected urea, and we plan to do it um, from April again for the rest of the remainder of the year. It's going to be all protected urea. One area we've been speaking about in the program is the last number of weeks as well is of course the whole area of chlorine free yeah. detergents, both for the bulk tanks and plant. And again, you're on board there. Yeah, we we started it um, uh, start early last year. We started and to date we have no major problems. It, few tweaks and things like that and get the right products but at the moment it seems to work very well for us. So overall you said when you were going to school you, you were hoping to become a farmer that was your dream come true it was your dream occupation now working in partnership with your mum and dad yeah. are you glad you made the decision? Yeah delighted yeah it, it can be tough at times but it's hugely rewarding and I have three small boys now and I'd be delighted if one of them or three of them got involved in agriculture because it's a brilliant way of life and you can see right. the season change and it's just a brilliant thing to be involved in. Well, Stephen, listen, best of luck as an open source farmer. You're in West Warford, you're in Agish. I know you'll have a big open day and I believe you're also getting involved in the West Warford Festival of Food with a sustainability bus that's going to be visiting your farm in the month of April. Listen, the best of luck to you, your wife and family, indeed, to the three young young, 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 young kids as well. For 2019, I'm sure we'll be paying a visit to your farm later in the year. Thanks very much, Karen.